I grew from 3 to 11,000 newsletter subscribers in 2 weeks. It's led me to $5,000 a month within just 2 months of starting my business. And today I'm exposing all the tools I use. First, I'll share tools I use to run my newsletter. Then I'll talk about how I distribute the newsletter content using social media. Finally, I'll share some mistakes you want to avoid when starting your content business, like this newsletter optimization checklist. You can grab the full version in the description below. And don't forget to sign up for my premium newsletter for more business tips. At the end of this video, I'll also share a resource that's helped me save hours of time. First, the tools I use to run my newsletter. I'm going to show you exactly what all of these platforms look like. The first one is Beehive. This is what I use for my newsletter and they make it very easy to set everything up. I actually have a playbook for how to set up your newsletter, so make sure to sign up for the waitlist link in description. Um, these are my newsletter metrics so far and it's very easy to see what's going on, including all of the recent posts. It's very easy to make posts and to make your website. I actually set up an automation to call unengaged subscribers, which is why my open rates have gone up. So I highly recommend checking them out. Here is an example of my welcome series, and it's just very intuitive. So I highly recommend Beehive. You can also monetize very easily and um, segment your subscribers. And here are the settings for your publication and your website. So it's very, very easy to set up. They make it very easy with templates so you can update everything. So that's Beehive. Uh, make sure to use my link. I'm linking all these products below. Please use my affiliate link. I'm going to show you passion fruit next. This is how I get my uh, sponsorships and they handle invoicing and everything for you. It's very, very easy. I also get to see a lot of sponsors on this platform. So I'm going to show you what my passion fruit page looks like. So this is like for my Instagram and for my um, newsletter. So sponsors can just click book an ad slot, put in their budget, things like that. <clears throat> and then let's say um, you type something here and then you can, you know, do all of that. And I actually get that here. Um, you can also discover brands who have campaigns going on and just open a campaign and apply to it. And if they accept, then um, you can get paid. The next thing I use is Notion. And this is just how I structure my creator business and all my documentation is here. Next up is Gummy Search. Gummy Search helps a lot with figuring out what people are struggling with and what they're looking for. So here's an example. I took a look at portfolio creators um, for the tech job search and I like to look at pain and anger. So pain and anger allows me to see what people are struggling with and allows me to design a solution for them because right now for work, I'm doing like a portfolio builder product. So yeah, this is really helpful in seeing what people are actually looking at so you can make your content kind of related to that. Next thing is audio notes. So I use this for brain dumps. I not only use it for brain dumps where I just like talk to it like this, <clears throat> like you can talk to it and then it summarizes everything for you but I also use it for YouTube videos so I put a YouTube video here and I made it summarize things for me I can also make it come up with structured point form notes action items things like that and it has a transcript as well you can also turn it into an email LinkedIn post tweet etc and ask it questions so it's really helpful, it really is useful, and saves me so much time. The next thing I use is PostHog. Um, this is more engineering heavy, but I still highly recommend it because it's pretty much free up to 100k site visitors, I believe. Yeah, it's very, very um, easy to use, and I use it for free right now because I'm not getting that many site visits. And it has all these cool features that is just really all in one. So this is what my PostHog looks like. It's really cool. I get to to see all the analytics. I did run a survey, so you can do A-B testing on it as well. I ran a survey and um, here. It was really interesting to see what people were responding with, so that was pretty cool. If you would prefer a more like a non-dev friendly platform, I recommend Microsoft Clarity. That one is also very cool. Let me see if I can show you Microsoft Clarity. Yeah, so you can actually see all the analytics and the recordings and you can get AI to summarize recordings for you. And you can just see kind of how people are interacting with your website. You can also see heat maps um, where people are clicking on desktop and mobile. And of course you can ask AI to summarize the heat maps for you to come up with 
ways that you can improve your website to make it more user friendly. The next thing I use is Tally Forms. So this is basically just a form that, that I use for waitlist, so like feedback forms, things like that. And these are the forms that I have and it's very easy to um, work with. You just kind of start typing and then you can just do that. There's so many possibilities with this. I've done quizzes with tally forms. It's just very easy to do. So um, I highly recommend them over type form. They have a lot more flexibility as well and they charge way less. Well, I use it for free right now, but yeah. Next, the social media tools I use. Next thing is CapCut. This is how I edit all my videos, usually on mobile, but I edit my YouTube videos on desktop app of CapCut. So um, I just find it very easy to use. I don't need all the fancy features of Premiere Pro. Like I'm not color grading or anything. The next thing is Metricool. This is what I use for all my social media scheduling. Um, it's basically everything I could ever ask for. So this is what mine looks like. So it has my website, which is my Beehive site. Um, all of my Instagram metrics, things like that. And you can also spy on your competitors. Like you can add competitors and see what posts of theirs are doing the best. You can look at which posts of yours get the most comments and stuff. And you can also plan all of your content. Um, this is what I had scheduled before. So I was basically posting like every day, but I'm kind of behind. And then you can schedule, like connect all your social media accounts and just schedule them all at once. I really like it, it's very easy to use. The only thing is they make you pay if you want to schedule on LinkedIn, which I didn't really need to schedule on LinkedIn, so it's free for me. And they only allow 50 posts per month, but most people don't post that much, so I just use the free version. The next thing is DM automation. This helps me so much because I used to use ManyChat, but I swapped over to this because first of all, it's so underrated. Like I tweet the founder all the time and I'm like, can you fix this? And then he fixes it right away. But if you notice, um, like on my posts, I can schedule the post because I put the link right in here in the comments. So they have AI grab the link and just DM it to people. With ManyChat, I had to like set up the automation every time. So like I couldn't schedule my posts because to before it goes live, I had to schedule the DM automation. But with this get link in chat, it automatically includes things if it's like in the caption, so I'm able to schedule posts. Like for these two, I didn't have DM automation, so like it didn't DM anyone. But for this one, I included a link and it like automatically DM'd people who commented a specific word. So you don't even have to go to this website. You can just schedule the post, tag them. So the way you have to do it is you have to say comment and then put the keywords in quotation marks and then put the actual link itself. You can't click links on Instagram, but it's for the AI to read it. So when people are commenting on it, they can just get it in their DMs. And then you have to tag link in chat um, unless you want to pay for the premium version because then you don't have to take them. The other thing I use is archive. So a lot of people tag me on their Instagram story and stuff, but sometimes I don't see it in time and it expires. So this is just a way for me to see all of the tags in case I don't get to see it on time. So these are the people, like the saved posts from everybody who's tagged me in their story. So it saves it before it expires. It's just really cool and I love just like seeing what people take me in because like I'm not checking Instagram all the time, right? I almost forgot. Here are the finance tools that I use. First up for my accounting, I use Wave. It's very easy to use, especially if you're trying to do bookkeeping as a beginner who doesn't really have accounting experience. Next up is Wise. I am Canadian, so I have to use Wise as my USD bank account. And I like this because they use a lot less fees. I don't like taking payments through PayPal, so I will try to use Wise where I can, especially if a sponsor wants to transfer it to a USD bank account. Then I just give them my Wise bank information. They also send an invoice for you if you create one in Wise, and people can click on the Wise link and pay easily via a bank transfer or via the wise link. It's just super easy to use. The next one I use is Stripe because everything on the internet basically integrates with Stripe. So I'm always getting emails from Stripe that the payout is going to go into my bank account. Like when I'm traveling, I get an email from them and it's just nice to hear. So specifically, I use it for my storefront where I sell Notion templates and for my premium newsletter subscription. Lastly, I use Lemon Squeezy for storefront where I sell Notion templates because it integrates with Stripe, but also because they are a merchant of records. So I don't have to worry about the tax stuff and setting up legal entities in specific countries where I'm making sales. This is 
what my lemon squeezy storefront looks like and I really liked their checkout page because you know I didn't have to redesign this myself they have all of the bank information for payment but it also allows me to decide on different pricing they have tiered pay what you want lead magnet and you can customize the picture and the description and that's all for most of my tools that I use but of course I use a little bit more so if you want a more in-depth breakdown I'm releasing a few playbooks and maybe a course in the future so make sure to check that out I'm gonna put the waitlist link in the description below here are the mistakes that you need to avoid for your newsletter social media and overall business for your newsletter don't do double opt-in instead set up a re-engagement email sequence number two add a sponsor me link on your newsletter homepage number three focus on the value prop instead of your brand name so for me on my subscribe page you have productivity tips and templates instead of vegan tech nomad number four make sure your newsletter is search engine indexable. I like to use Google Search Console to see what terms people are searching for when they click on my website. Now the social media mistakes to avoid. Number one, don't focus on just one hook. You need to experiment with them. I have a video on this for a more in-depth tutorial. Number two, start monetizing with affiliate first, especially if you don't have your own offer or sponsors yet. Number three, if you're promoting a cool tool and they don't have affiliate, attach a UTM parameter at the end of the URL. This makes sure they know the traffic is coming from you so they can reach out to you if they want to pursue a partnership. And if you do start landing sponsors, make sure the sponsor covers any payment fees. Look at the terms of the contract, so number of revisions or refilming, usage rights for ads, and exclusivity, as in not promoting any competitors. Lastly, focus on what's easiest and most consistent for you, whether it's a text-based platform or a video-based platform. For the business tips, number one, be very clear about what problem you're solving and what value you're bringing to your audience. Number two, be very, very clear about who your audience is. It's too general if you just say hockey enthusiasts or finance beginners. It would really help if you talk to some people from your ideal audience. Number three, focus and be clear about what offer you have. It can be very tempting to accept anyone who will pay you, but sometimes it can lead to burnout, especially if you're doing something custom for every single person who requests services from you. When you're hopping on sales and discovery calls, don't talk more than 20 or 30 percent of the time. You want to be spending that time asking more questions to understand the problem that the user is facing. So instead of proposing how you can help them just really listen to the problems they're facing and dig deeper a tool I like to use is called founderpal.ai you can find the link in the description but it's basically saved me hours of time on narrowing down who my ideal audience is and you can see in the link I attached UTM parameters so if there's a spike in traffic to their website they can know it came from me and we can work out a collaboration if they're interested if this is helpful please like comment subscribe I post new business tips like these every week and if you have any questions or feedback for me, just leave a comment.